Welcome to Unit 1, Part 2 Lectures. And this is Introduction to System Analysis and Design. Our main objective today is to go through the system development life cycle. Again, system development life cycle. And we're going to talk about information system project identification also initiation. So a system development life cycle and uh, we here we break it into four stages. And uh, the first stage is planning, then analysis, then design, then implementation. And again, in the planning phase is where we try to understand the problem and uh, what we want to achieve, the main objective of the project why we want to develop a system. Uh, normally when we are developing a system, the main goal is to use the system to solve a problem. Maybe there's an, an operation that's normally being performed manually in a business organization, and we may decide to automate it or use a computer system you know, to solve that problem or go through that operation. A very simple example can be the accounting. Accounting department most likely they can use a calculator and other manual device to keep recording of all the business transactions, I mean account receivable and payable, etc. Or we may decide that we are going to develop a software that will keep track of the accounting operations in the organization. So the first planning phase, again, is to understand the problem, the objective, uh, what the software want to achieve. The next stage, we move to analysis. This is the place we have to write down the specifications of the system. For example, what would be the input of the system and what would be the output of the system. This is where we basically list all the requirements of the system both functional requirement and non-functional requirement. And we may discuss that detail in a future lesson. And then the next step is design phase. Now in the analysis phase, we know what is the input and also we know what is the output. Now the design phase is where we are going to write our algorithm or we are going to imp imp design the system in a way that we can transform the input to the output. So analysis, we know what should be the input. Also, we know what should be the output. Design is where we are going to write the algorithm or the possible tag, design the possible tax that will make it possible to transfer from input to output. Then the implementation phase is this, this is the phase we are going to again, write the code, implement the system. So we are going to use any computer programming language such as Java, C++, etc., to implement the system. So those are the four stages. But again, we have something we call the waterfall model, or in some textbook, they may go more detail. And for example, after the implementation, another phase can be the testing phase. This is where we test the system. And after testing the system, if everything is okay, then we go to the operational phase. This is where the system will be taken to uh, the organization uh, environment or premises and put the system into operations. And we may discuss about this, this again at different stages of the course. Uh, for example, in the testing phase, we have different types of testing. We may discuss maybe unit testing, integration testing, alpha testing, etc. So again, system development life cycle, these are the main four phases: the planning, analysis, design, and implementation. So the system development life cycle, as we said earlier, is composed of four fundamental phases: the planning, analysis, design, and implementation. Each of the phases is composed of steps, which rely on techniques that produce their specific document that explain various elements of the system. As we said earlier, planning phase, we are going to get something out here, at least 
what is the objective of the system, uh, what is the benefit, and what the system will be achieving. Analysis phase, again, as we said earlier, this is where we get our requirements of the system. What are the inputs, what may be the outputs, etc. So we may go through each phase. So the first is the planning. This phase is the fundamental process of understanding why an information system should be built. And that's what we said earlier. Also determine how the project team will go about building it. So the planning phase is why and how. Why do we need a system? Is it more feasible to build a system or to have automated operation of the tax than doing it manually. So in this planning phase also, we do what we call the feasible analysis. And also how it's going to be carried on. So the planning phase has two steps, project initiation. So the system business value to the organization is identified. How will it lower costs or even increase revenue? So here we can do again our feasible analysis. Then during the project management, the project manager creates a work plan, the staffs, the project, and also put techniques in place to help the project team control and direct the project through the entire software development life cycle. Or we use that acronym SDLC. So again, the planning phase are these two steps, project initiation and project management. And we can see that here, everything deal on the, the cost. The cost, what are the costs at weigh the profit or the revenue and also the feasible analysis. So in analysis phase, we are going to answer the question such as who, who will use the system, what the system will do, where and when it will be used. So during this phase, the project team investigate any current systems, identify improvement opportunities, and also develop a concept for the new system. So analysis phase has three steps. First, analysis strategy then requirement gathering, which is one of the important tasks in the whole process. Then the system proposal. So in analysis strategy, normally this will be de developed to guide the project team's efforts. And for example, the study of the current system and its problem and envision ways to design new system. A very simple example would be if a company is doing some operation manually. By using or by converting it to automated system, will it be more beneficial, cut down the cost and increase revenue or not? So this is the phase that is, this is very important. Here I always say use the term feasible analysis, cost and benefits, we want analysis. If we achieve this first step, then the second step now requirement gathering. What this, this is where, this is the phase that we are going to ask the users of the system or the project team members, the sponsors, what the system will perform. What is the tax of the system? What will normally be the input of the system? And what will be the output? So requirement gathering, we have two types of requirement, functional requirement and non-functional requirement. Functional requirement lists all the functions or the tasks the system will perform. Non-functional requirement will be dealing with the quality of the system. For example, uh, building a system to, uh, let's say, government agency, maybe security will be a very important issue. So that will be one of the non-functional requirements, security. Now, building a system to non-profit organization, maybe security is not an issue, but maybe speed of the system or user friendliness will be the main issue. So this is where, again, we gather all the requirements of the system. 
Then the next step is the system proposal. The, this is the phase that we are going to write the proposal. So the proposal will be presented to the project sponsor and other key individuals or the stakeholders of the project. And they may decide what, excuse me, they may decide whether we should continue with the project or not. So next we move to the design. As we said earlier, design phase is where we already know the input and output of the system in the analysis phase. Now how can we tra transform the input to output? Let's say I'm building a system to calculate a salary of employees. I know the input will be a number of hours work, hourly rate, the output to be the salary of the employee, the gross salary before tax. Now in the design phase, how can I convert in these two inputs, which is employee hourly rate and number of hours it works to a gross salary? So I'm going to design, maybe multiply the two inputs and that will give me the salary. So that will be the design phase. So here we say design phase decide how the system will operate in terms of the hardware, software, network infrastructure. Also the user interface forms and report that will be used and any possible specific programs, database and files that will be needed. So this is where we are going to design the system. This is the phase. Then the design phase also has a four steps. First, the design strategy. We have to clarify whether the system will be developed by the company or maybe by outside the company, maybe outsource it. Then architectural design, this will describe the hardware, software, network, infrastructure that will be used. So architectural design is the main infrastructure we need concerned about the infrastructure of the system, uh, the organization, so hardware, software, and the network. Then also database and file specification is very important because every computer program or a system requires an input. So most of the time the input may come from a file or from a database system. So this document defines what and where the data will be stored. Then the program design defines what the programs need to be written and what they will be. So these are again the four steps of design. The strategy is very important. Are we going to outsource the project or we are going to develop the project in our organization? Infrastructure, what do we have available? What kind of hardware, what's the software? and also database where we are going to store our data. And then from there, we move on with the designing of the application or the system. Implementation is after we design the system, now we are going to use our main tool. And this is where the computer programmers will come in. They are going to write the code and either Java, C, or any programming language to implement the system. So normally we can see that from the first stage to the third stage, mostly is the system analysis. Because system analysis, they design the system, they analyze the system. And the implementation phase is the programmer who's going to implement the system based on the outcome of the analysis. So the implementation phase also have three steps, system construction, Yes, the system is built and tested to make sure it performs as desired. Installation, the old system is turned off in the new system is put on, on operation. Then in the future, we may need to upgrade the system, maintenance of the system if the system is in operation. So this is where we plan our support plan. Most likely we are going to have a manual or some waiting document about the system uh, for the in case of troubleshooting, maintenance etc. So the next is the project identification and also initiation. So a project is identified when again someone or an organization need some assistance. In this case an organization want to perform some operation and they do it manually it takes too long or maybe they can't even do it manually 
So this is where uh, project initiation may come in. So the need may surface when an organization identified a unique and also a competitive ways of using IT, information technology, to leverage the capability of emerging technology, technology such as cloud computing, uh, radio frequency identification, Web 2.0. A project sponsor is the person or a group who has interest in the system success. Uh, sometimes they may fund the whole project or they can be part of the project team. So a project sponsor will work throughout the software development lifecycle to make sure that the project is moving in the right direction from the perspective of the business. Then the project sponsor also can serve as the primary point of contact for the project team. Now the size or the scope of the project may determine by the kind of sponsor that will be involved. We also said the project sponsor has an insight needed to determine the business value. We have two main things we have to value the tangible value. This can be quantified. For example, we can know the cost. Uh, example is uh, how long it takes maybe to accomplish some specific tax. And how long it costs to do some operation. But intangible values, we cannot quantify it. So example would be like a customer service. We develop a system that improves the customer service. But we can say that we uh, gain so, so, so amount quantified, we cannot quantify it. The next is a system request. This is the document after the project initiation has been approved, gone through. Next, we have to again come up with a system request. This is the document that describes the business reasons for building a new system and the value that the system is expected to provide, both tangible and intangible value. The project sponsor usually completes this form as part of the formal system selection process within the organization. So next, the business requirements of the project refer to the business capabilities that the system will need to have. And then the business value normally would describe the benefit that the organization should expect from the system. Special issues also are included in the documents as a catch-all category for other information that should be considered in assessing the project. Also, the completed system request is submitted to the approval committee for consideration. And we may go details on this when we cover the project management topic. And the committee normally will review the system requests and they may decide to approve the project or disapprove it again based on feasibility studies, for example, uh, technical issue, funds issue, or uh, feeling the value of the system comparing to the previous system and there's not much difference. So they may decide not to go on with the project. But if they decided to go on with the project, then next will be the feasibility analysis, which we may, we may discuss this more detail in the project management topic. So this will be the end of this lecture and uh, wish everybody the best. Thank you.